Hi y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through my kayak. I actually have two kayaks, but the one y'all normally see in my videos is kind of rigged out to the max. I have got pretty much every toy that I could possibly install on this thing, and I haven't done a walkthrough video since 2019. And obviously since then, a lot's changed on it. So I'm gonna just kind of take you through front to back and show you what I've put on it, kind of talk about how I've installed it, what I'm using it for, and just maybe kind of give you all some ideas if you're thinking about adding any of these accessories or whatever, you know, I don't know. I get a lot of requests for me to talk about the kayak, so here it is. So this is a 2017 model Hobie Pro Angler. Older kayak, I bought it used, but not much has changed in the Hobie lineup in years other than the logo on the side, so why go out and get a new one every year? But up here at the front, I've put on a motor guide XI3 trolling motor with GPS. This motor speed wise will get me about 4.5 to 4.7, depending on water conditions and how much weight I have in the kayak. The biggest thing though that I like for this motor is the GPS functions. It's got spot lock, course heading. Spot lock is the big one for me. Being a cat fisherman, I'm anchor fishing probably 75, 80% of the time, having the ability to spot lock over areas versus dropping anchor, it's a huge time saver and it's much safer than anchoring down in, in current, especially at the faster current speeds. The other thing that's nice with having the spot lock is just the ability if I'm drifting, if I'm trolling and I come across a school of fish, all these rods start going down, I can push a button, anchor myself on those fish versus having to take a physical anchor undo all the rope, drop it down, potentially spook those fish. So I'm a big fan of the motor. It does add some weight to the bow. If you're out in rough water, real choppy water, you're gonna get some water popping over the front there. Can be a little bit of a nuisance, but overall, great accessory that I've added. Moving back, I've got the Garmin 93 UHD Graph. This also has the live scope transducer, which I'll point out when I get to the other side of the kayak. This is a newer accessory added a few months ago. It's uh, you know, one of them things I wanted to try out for catfishing with the live scope. Kind of a novelty thing. I can see the fish come up if I'm anchored or you know, if I'm drifting along, but it doesn't really help me like I had hoped. Now, where the live scope does shine is when you are fishing for something like crappie, for instance, and you're coming up on a dock or a brush pile and you wanna look around and see what's under there before you cast. Excellent for that, great tool for that. But um, I've got it mounted here on my front hatch so that it's up in front of me and out of the way. My old graph was mounted here on the side, but with this nine inch screen, it kind of cuts over a little bit. And when I have my tournament measurement board for the catfish tournaments, I lay it across here and this graph was getting in the way. So having it up here on the front keeps it in front of me where I can easily see it, it's out of the way and it makes the wiring to the battery very simple. I cut out a couple notches here in my front hatch and I run my cords in here, it keeps everything pretty clean. So. That's how I've rigged that. Now my live scope, let me walk over here and show you. There's my supervisor. That's Daphne, the dog. I got a new dog, y'all. She's doing a great job out here watching me do this video. I think she's a little camera shy. I think that's her first time on video. You got anything you wanna to say to these people, dog? Speechless, nothing. Anyway, live scope transducer. So my live scope cord comes out here. This is really the only cord I have going across my deck, but I have it up here so that I can control this with my hand and be able to spin this around. This is a fishing specialties mount. I put this on a Hobie H-Rail adapter plate there, just screwed it into that adapter plate. And so this part comes off for transport. I can set this down in the kayak. I have the, the Hobie rod holder mount there. I strap it in place and that's how I transport it. And then when I'm ready to use it, again, just pop it out slide it right down in that mount and I'm good to go. I took the handle off of it, off this mount, cause it was just kind of big bulky getting in the way. I put a little piece of tape there instead so I can see what direction that transducer is pointing. So uh, very helpful mount there, just keeping it by my seat. But you know, again, the live scope's not something I use as much as what I initially thought I would. Of all the tools and accessories I've added to this kayak, it's probably, 
the one thing that maybe I have a little buyer's remorse on. It's helpful at times, but not as much as what I thought. So anyway, uh, going on back in the kayak. So I have my transducer for the Garmin mounted off the side. Hobie does have a transducer mount up under that, which I had my old transducer, but with the side scan, I need it under the kayak. And I also, I'll show you when I open up this front hatch, I have everything easily removable. Everything is quick disconnect. So if I travel somewhere, I'm staying in a hotel, the graph, this, everything pops off along with my battery case. I can take it in the car. I can take it in the hotel and charge everything. Don't have to worry about it getting stolen off the kayak. And again, it's very simple. That's important for me. I'm lazy. I don't like breaking down a kayak. So everything needs to be quick disconnect. 30 seconds to a minute, I can have graph, transducer, batteries, everything out of this kayak. I'll show you that hat. We'll finish up the tour with that front hatch. So I need to, I need two hands. I got one hand holding the camera. I need two hands to be able to pop that lid open and film. So anyway, we'll get to it. Moving back though, got my rod holders. These are Scotty rod holders. These are what I use for catfishing, the 241 model. I've got those mounted to a base here. I don't like the Hobie H-Rail mounts because I find they slip with the downward pressure. I vertical fish a lot and that downward pressure can cause those to slip. So I've got those mounted on a uh, one by six board. They're bolted through with U-bolts to the H-Rails and then I have my rod holder bases bolted through to the board. That is solid, secure. It's not going nowhere. Now, those are my catfish rod holders my carp videos, you see me using this right here. This is Scotty rocket launchers on a triple base. I pop this out, put this in, and now I can spread my carp rods out a little further, a little further apart. So just a different setup. They all use the same Scotty base, just a matter of what particular rod holder is best suited for the type of fishing that I'm doing. I have a catfish town called kite catfish obviously for a reason that's why i spend the bulk of my time doing but i don't just catfish exclusively do a lot of ultralight fishing bluegill crappie been really into the carp fishing lately so do a variety of techniques and different tools different job so moving back uh seat there comes with the kayak this kayak was bought used it had a boondocks landing gear installed on it i never use that i have it on a trailer i trailer it everywhere so i don't use that but i did mount my rear rod holders to the landing gear base so again they're solid secure not going anywhere behind the seat i have just a standard milk crate with some pvc attached for my rod holders inside this crate cutting board uh, my live bait net the times where I do use live bait, I put my live bait tank down in the milk crate. I used to keep my battery for the motor there. Now it is in the front hatch, which again, we'll go over here in just a minute. My rods here, new for 2022. The, my signature series rods from Catfish Sumo, the Kayak Catfish Golly Whopper rods. Check those out, catfishsumo.com. Code word kayak, get you 10% off your order. These rods, awesome. Short handle for when you're kayak fishing, doesn't encroach on you. Made for reeling in fish while setting down, but also has a extension handle. So when you pull your kayak up on the bank, now you can turn your seven foot kayak rod into an eight foot surf casting rod and get those longer casts. So awesome rod, Catfish Sumo hit it out of the park with that one, very happy with them. But I keep typically four catfish rods down in my uh, crate here obviously got the molded in rod holders here which i can add two extra rods if i'm carrying a bait rod or something else behind this i've got a yeti size 35 cooler for carrying my bait i can carry three or four days worth of bait in that newest accessory back here is the power pole since i have been into carp fishing i'm going into these backwater shallow creeks ideally i'd like to pull the kayak up on the bank and fish off the bank in reality, that's just not possible with the water levels being up for summer pool, overhanging trees everywhere. There's just not places to pull up on the bank. Power poles allow me to anchor down with the dual setup. I can keep my kayak stationary and keep my line stationary, which is very important when you're carp fishing. You don't want your lines getting pulled and moved all over the place. So I've got this mount here. This was a Tim Percy mount. I bought it from Louisiana Kayak Customs for custom kayaks. I may have butchered that. I can't remember. Google it. I'm sure it'll pop up, but I bought it from them. 
and it has the ability you can add a motor like a torpedo or a newport in addition to the dual power poles and so i've got those back here i've got the eight foot uh, ultralight power poles you know i was told that i may feel those poles wiggling around as i'm hitting boat wake and waves and stuff I don't even notice them back there. Uh, really, I don't notice them at all. So been a pretty cool accessory, helping me a lot with the carp. So this is overall kind of the toys, just kind of a quick run through. I'm kind of talking fast because I don't want this to be a super long video. But um, anyway, last frontier here is just to open this front hatch and show you how I have rigged my batteries for powering the motor and the graph and show you how I've set that up just to kind of be able to quickly really move, remove everything if I get my words out. So that again, if I'm staying somewhere or, you know, whatever traveling, I can quickly take it off. So let me open that hatch. We'll pick the video up there. Stick. Come on, stick. Come on, get your stick. I'm out here, y'all. I'm running out of daylight. I had to wait till late this evening to get the kayak wash so I could film this video because it's so dang hot. I'm running out of daylight. The girl leave, the girlfriend leaves to go get a pizza. Dang dog chasing her down the road. I gotta bribe the dog with a stick to get back up here at the house. I miss my old supervisor Roscoe so bad. This one here don't behave worth nothing, but she is kind of cute though. She's growing on me. She just don't behave. Anyway, let me finish off this video and show you what's under the lid here. So again, I cut these notches in the lid here of the hatch so that I can slide these, slide this hatch over the wires and get a secure uh, connection here to the kayak. So when, the, when you are taking some waves over the bow, your hole don't fill up with water there. Inside the hole, look at this, my fancy, if I could train this dog for anything, she could hold up this hatch for me. But instead, I got the two by four. But inside here, I really don't keep anything but the batteries. I do have my umbrella, which is the poor man's bimini top and my paddle. But inside this, I have a 100 amp hour amped outdoors lithium battery for my motor. I have a 30 amp hour for the graph. And then I have the live scope black box there. And again, everything is on quick disconnect. So my motor plugs in here. The wire goes, lays right along the edge of the hatch here, goes in here. When I need to take the motor off uh, for long trips or whatever, quick disconnect, pop this out, pull the motor out. And again, everything un unattaches here. This basket that I have my batteries in, I've got it strapped to my sailing mast um, holder there. I guess that's what that's called. You can maybe see part of it there. I've got that strap running around the back holding all of this in place. So I pop that buckle on that, pull the, uh, disconnect the battery there from the motor, disconnect it again from the graph, which again, I have just another quick connect, disconnect for it. And I can pop that whole battery container out along with taking this off the ram ball and my transducer out. Everything again comes out that's a 30 second job right there and it's all removable. So the battery box up in the front of the kayak does add some weight, but this kayak's very stable and it's really not unmanageable. If you're out there in ocean waves, probably gonna have problems, but I'm not ever fishing in those conditions in this kayak. So hopefully, you know, this is kind of give you an idea, a run through of all this stuff that I have all attached to the kayak. Now, do you need all this stuff to go fishing? Heck no, you don't need this stuff. Don't rush out and buy any of this, any of this stuff, but is it helpful? Yeah, I mean, all of these things are tools. The motor gets you places a little quicker. Spot lock, such a huge advantage over a regular anchor. The big graph with the map card, the live scope, the power poles to anchor me in shallow water. Again, you know, it's just, all these things are expensive accessories, but they are a tool for a job. And, and you know, with me doing YouTube for a living, I want the best tool for a job. Uh, whatever it is I'm fishing for, catfish, carp, crappie, bluegill, whatever, I want the best gear possible. Will I have this set up when my YouTube days are over? Absolutely not. I will go back to a more simple setup like my other kayak over there. That's an Old Town Big Water that's basically stock. I've mounted a couple rod holders on it and a place for a camera mount. That's it, everything else stock on it, very simple setup. 
which all you need to to go out and have a good day and catch some fish but this right here is kind of the ultimate setup for me to be able to film and make sure that i'm going to catch as many fish as possible on a particular trip and make sure i get as much content as possible for this channel so anyway y'all that's a wrap on this video dog tell the audience hi at least would you that's daphne the dog finally talked the girlfriend into letting me get a dog since my roscoe died last year and this is what we end up with um got her from the shelter she was animal control had picked her up and uh we got her i wanted to name her watermelon we settled on daphne she likes playing stick she likes playing with her toys she doesn't listen or behave at all but she's a pretty good dog she's growing on me day by day anyway that's a wrap y'all i'm out of here see you in the next